so i resent that um, idiot comment by the way yeah 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 so look it looks like we have 24 people signed up to the first inaugural meeting of the sql pass book readers and like i said before if you weren't here there's a google group link in the chat window and if you're not a member of the Google group yet, please be a member now. SQL Pass gave us a vehicle to talk to our members, but it wasn't very interactive and it was kind of clunky and we didn't really like it. So we created a new Google group because in our group, we want a lot of interaction. We really want to get to know you and we want you to get to know each other. And we want to create somewhat of a community where we can rely on each other. So that's kind of like the idea behind SQL Pass Book Readers is that we're going to share an experience together. We're going to read this book together. We're going to learn together. And then we're going to question, you know, we're going to ask questions when we have problems and then we're going to answer each other's questions. Now, what we've done as a virtual chapter is we've brought Brad Cunningham, Rob Sullivan and me together so that we can kind of guarantee you'll get decent answers to your questions. But, but Brad, Rob, and I don't want to answer all of your questions. We want you guys to answer each other's questions. And the reason why we have behind that is I have found that I am my own best student, meaning if I have to explain something that's kind of complicated, and I learn it the best in my explanation. And then hopefully the person that's hearing the explanation is hearing it and learning from it. So we want a lot of interaction and that's why the Google group. So if you haven't already, get on the Google group. Please put your picture of yourself on the Google group so that we can see what you look like and we can kind of begin bonding and get to know you and, and see who's participating. And that way when we see you at the SQL Pass conference or we see you at SQL Saturdays or we see you at different um, de developer conferences around, you know, we're, we'll already be friends. So let's just real quickly introduce um, the people that have volunteered to manage this group, me, Brad, and Rob. And I'll go first. We'll just kind of introduce ourselves so you get a feel for our voices. My name is Ike Ellis, and I am a SQL Server MVP and have been for a couple of years. Um, I have a strong business intelligence and SQL background, but I'm also a frontline developer. I write a lot of applications and probably write code every single day. In addition to that, I'm a partner in this organization called the Monastery. Um, this is a software development craftsmanship shop where we look at software development not just as a job, but more of a lifestyle where we we like to speak, we like to do great work, we like to um, just kind of do amazing things together. So um, it's more like an artist colony for software developers, and you can kind of read more about it at that site. Um, I'm writing a book um, on software development management best practices with Llewellyn Falco, and I write software all the time, and I'm always in data, and I'm probably in SQL Server Management Studio every day of my life, including uh, Christmas. And that's me. Brad, you want to go next? Sure. So my name is Brad. Did Cunningham. I lose Brad? Oh, can you hear me? I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Okay, Ike. Yeah, you're a little you're a little soft, but I can hear you. Okay, I'll try to speak up. Uh, so my name is Brad Cunningham. I'm a C Sharp MVP, and I have been for the past four years now. And uh, I'm an independent software consultant in the San Diego area. And I, um, I speak at user groups. I do, like I said, we have an in-person group called Tech Immersion that's very similar to this virtual chapter. Uh, I work heavily in C-sharp, uh, also done a lot in the web, ASP.NET, MVC, mobile development, uh, just kind of all over the place. And I work with Ike as well as part of the monastery in the software craftsmanship um, and so I'm hoping to bring kind of a consumer view to this user group. So I'm not as heavy into the data as these other guys, uh, but I definitely use it as a developer. So things like entity framework and, um, some of the more developer focused pieces where I touch SQL, um, hopefully I'll be able to give you some perspective from that angle as well. So that's, uh, I think that's it for me, Rob, you want to go next? 
Yep, I am an enterprise data magistrate. I work with a variety of products um, in SQL Server being the main one. I don't work with Ike or Brad, so I'm here to keep them honest. And I'm just a <laughs> hacker. Well, so Brad, Rob, and I have, um, I've been friends with Brad and Rob for years, and we have a long time relationship and friendship. So you're going to kind of see that camaraderie come out as we start talking about these topics and uh, we read this book together. So um, if we t say any inside jokes or something, feel free to kind of stop us and let us know you've got something to say. Now, we want a lot of interaction, and so I want to test something out. On your GoToWebinar control panel, do you guys see where you can raise your hand? Um, I realize there's 35 of you right now, and I'd like to see kind of everybody raise their hand right now, because I just want to make sure everybody can raise their hand. So, nice. all right, hold much like it's working. Raises. Yeah, that is, that is awesome. Okay, perfect. So, we want you guys to raise your hand. This isn't like a webinar where we don't want you to ask questions or talk. And that's why there's three of us here, so that while one of us is talking, the other one can say, hey, you know, Tom has a question, or, or Frank, or David, or Lynn has a question, and, and we need to get them, you know, some mic time. So feel free to raise your hand if you have something to say. If you don't, then go ahead and clear your hand right now so we kind of go back to normal. And the other, yeah, thing awesome. we, the other thing we wanted to do with the hand raising too, if you have, uh, so we're doing all this voice over IP. Uh, if you have a microphone set up, uh, we'd love to be able to have you use it. And so if you do have a question that you'd like to ask, go ahead and raise your hand. And when we have a stopping point, we'll go ahead and unmute your microphone um, so you can ask the question to us over, over voice over IP. If you don't have a microphone set up, then go ahead and type a question into the question uh, box and uh, me and Rob and Ike will answer those as they come in as fast as possible. Um, but if you do have a mic, we'd love to hear from you um, and get to know your voice and get to know who you are. So, um, but we do want to keep all the mics muted throughout the GoToWebinar just to prevent all the background noise from, from cropping up. So Shane looks like he still has his hand raised. I'm going to go ahead and unmute him and see if he, he has a real question here. Oh, oh, and then he just put his hand down. Okay, so Shane's out. All right, cool. <laughs> all right. Um, if you look at the Google group, the next agenda item is the origin of the group. The reason why Brad, Rob, and I started this group is because we were reading books on our own, and we thought it was more fun to read books together. And so we thought, well, we'll just have a little book club for the three of us, and if we read and we like what we read, we'll talk about it once a month. And then we thought, well, why not just have more people do this with us? So we're kind of inviting you into our little private book club so that you can read along with us and you can, you can enjoy um, the experience and hopefully get questions answered and just kind of the more the merrier. So um, we want interactivity. We want you to participate on the Google group. We want to get to know you. We want a community. So just be aware that that's where this comes from and we encourage you to talk to us and to, you know, Email us privately is okay, but we found in the past that when we get private emails, we don't get a group benefit. So if you could kind of use the Google group as the center for your questions, um, probably somebody else has a question along the same lines, but they just didn't know to ask it or they didn't feel comfortable asking it. So try to make everything a little more public if it's appropriate and then private, you know, if you're going to say that maybe my voice is irritating or something. Um, so agenda item one is the rules of the group. The first thing is we wanted this to be a very safe place where you could come and get questions answered. You know, I like to learn from a book. I think reading a book is like my preferred way of learning, but there's a couple of problems with a book. The first problem is a book will emphasize the wrong thing sometimes. They'll, they'll emphasize problems that maybe the author had, but nobody else really has. So when we read the book together, we can kind of emphasize the right parts or say, hey, pay attention on page 35. That page is really important. You know, he's saying something that is very, very useful. And then you can ignore pages 45 through 50 because nobody ever has that problem anymore. That's been solved. Um, the second problem with a book is if you, everybody learns differently. And so if you read something and you misinterpret it, the book won't answer your questions. So that's the other reason why we're together is so that you can ask a question no matter how dumb 
you think it is. It's not a dumb question. And, and know that you'll have a place to get an answer for it, either here or on the Google group. Um, and then Rob, Rob mentioned this when we talked about the rules of the group. Um, Rob, do you want to talk about how books aren't current? Yeah, so uh, some of our books that they're written a year ago, um, they could easily go outdated. Uh, you know, things move really quickly. You get service packs pretty frequently. Anything to do with the cloud, that changes frequently. And just the nature of development changes really quickly. So it's something to be cognizant of, of what you're reading may not be the most current thing. Yeah, and SQL Server is going to rev a little more often. They haven't hidden that. They announced it last year at SQL Pass that they were going to start releasing pretty rapidly. And so on our topic, and we don't want to just cover SQL Server. We'll talk about that in just a second. But we want to cover a wide range of DBA-centered topics. We might read a book about Redgate tooling. We might read a book about Excel. We might read a book about NoSQL. MongoDB is really popular right now. Cassandra's popular. Um, couch. We might read a book about Hadoop or um, MapReduce. Uh, there, are all, there are a lot of topics to learn about, and there are a lot of great authors out there. And so we're going to pick these books together and then read them together, and, and, not, and not in any particular order. But these products change quickly. And yeah, Rob's absolutely right. We need a way to kind of stay current and notice that when something's either still relevant or not irrelevant. Okay, so agenda item number two, experts don't agree on everything or sometimes anything. Um, like I said, Rob, Brad, and I have known each other for a while, and uh, we have found that we don't agree on certain things. And so we might bring up a topic or you might ask a question and there might be a little bit of a debate. We actually think that there's like there's like a lot of value in that debate. I mean, sometimes when we see answers online, we see like a sterile environment where the, they give the idea that there's only one right way to do something. And the reality is people have different skills and they look at their craft in different ways and they perfect different techniques. And so hopefully in the debate, you'll learn something that it's not a sterile environment. There's a lot of ways to do something and maybe one of us will be more convincing than the other one, but just know that when we disagree, it's it's only because it's only from a place of affection and mutual respect. Not it's not uh, it's not a, the need to be right or from from a position of ego or something like that. Okay, it's also the issue of different contexts. Oh right, right, right. I, I might be coming from one direction and I'm from a different direction. We could both be right. Right, right. Yeah, good point. Um, Brad, you want to talk about the book review? Yeah, sure. So um, at various times as we're doing this, uh, this group, we may be fortunate enough to have one of the publishers or, or possibly the author uh, contribute some number of copies of the book to, to our group, and we were able to distribute those uh, for free. Um, so we'll occasionally get that to happen. Um, you know, some, most of the times it'll be an e-copy um, of the book. Sometimes we'll get printed copies, just kind of depends. For this group, I'm sure it'll be primarily e-copies. Uh, and when we do that, um, the one thing that we ask is if we give you a free book as part of this group, we ask that when we complete the book, that you'll contribute a book review um, to either the publisher's website or to Amazon, or, or some people will do uh, the same review in both places and just copy and paste. So uh, we do that just as a thank you for our publishers that, that they're giving us these free copies and we want to repay them with a review. Now that doesn't mean that we want you to give uh, a five-star review and say that you love the book. If you really didn't, you know, all we ask is that you give an honest review. If you thought the book was terrible and you think it wasn't, um, it wasn't helpful for the subject, then then you should say that in your review so that other people can benefit from that knowledge and and that the publisher can benefit too to know what what books are selling well and what types of topics you guys are interested in. So um, so we won't we won't always have free copies of the book. Uh, I'm not sure that we have them for this initial track uh, just because we're trying to gauge how many people will have and how many copies we can really wrangle. So I'm not sure that we have any copies for for it sucks book this track, but we may in the future. Um, have a handful of free copies to give out. And when we do, we just ask that, that that book review is provided at the end of the track as a, 
as a way to keep the free copies coming in for the future assignments. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and you know what, you might, if you're going to read it, you might as well review it anyway. I mean, we do have, we do have um, something kind of exciting right now, and that is Itzik Ben-Gan, the author of the book we're going to read starting this month, is going to come speak with us and be part of this meeting and answer your questions um, probably not next month, but the month after. That's a pretty exciting thing for you guys and me. I'm excited too. Itzik has been a colleague of mine for a number of years and we've you know, met each other and emailed back and forth together. And, and I asked him if he'd come and do it and he said he'd be honored to do it. So I, we just need to pick, make sure that on our time, you know, it's Israel friendly or he's traveling to a place where he can, he's going to be awake. He travels a lot. But anyway, we'll have the author of this book join us and we'll probably have authors of our future books join us as well. So even if you don't get a free book, writing a book review is a good way to say thank you for their time um, and their volunteering. Okay, agenda item four is the Google group faces. Um, I've been emphasizing how we want to build a relationship in this community and how we want to get to know you. And one of the easy ways to do that is to just add a face, to add a picture to Google circles so that when you join the Google group, um, we get to see who you are and kind of know what you look like when you speak and kind of recognize your face. So it's just another way of like getting to know each other. Um, we talked about the relationships. Item six is reading 100 pages a month. Um, we've run the book club before um, in San Diego. Brad mentioned that earlier um, before the call started. And we found we used to read about 300 pages a month, but nobody would ever do that with us. And we also found that in a technical manual, when you do 300 pages a month, this meeting would need to be like four hours long just to cover it. So I realized that 100 pages a month doesn't sound like a large commitment. It's about eight hours of reading, depending on how fast of a reader you are. So expect about eight hours of homework every month. Um, we think that's a reasonable amount to read together. And then if you read it with us, we'll read it and then highlight your questions. And like for this book, I'm going to read mine on Kindle. And Kindle's got something kind of cool. You can just click on this and highlight it. Well, as, we re as you read and you want to talk about something in the group or you have a question, just highlight it and then bring your book to class with us once a month and then um, that way you'll remember what some of your problems were. Um, by the way, that's not, uh, that wasn't the book that we're reading. That's, uh, that's another business book I'm reading. Okay. Um, so be sure to do the reading. Um, follow us on Twitter. Uh, Brad, Rob, and I are all active on Twitter, and here are our Twitter, ha Twitter handles. So feel free to ask us questions over Twitter or to use Twitter as just a communication mechanism. We might redirect you to the Google group so that everybody gets the benefit of it, but um, we talk to each other on Twitter, and, and we'll talk to you on Twitter too. Um, item eight is our reading assignment. So let me go to our book here in my Kindle library. Here it is. OK. And this is the table of contents um, for it six books. So we're reading SQL Server 2012 T-SQL Fundamentals. Um, for the person who, let's see, no, beginning T-SQL 2008 is not the right book. That's right. Um, so in this book, we're going to read the first three chapters um, before we meet in April. So we're going to look at the T-SQL querying and programming background and just talk about set theory and uh, some basic like um, create table statements and things like that. And then chapter two, we're going to do single table queries. We're going to look at the select statement and the different clauses of the select statement and how they execute. And then chapter three, we're going to look at joining. And we're going to look at all the various types of joining. And then we're going to practice joining. So that's roughly about 100 pages of reading right there. I think you guys can read that in the next month. That's not that difficult. I realize some of you are seasoned SQL Server experts, and you might be thinking, well, that's too easy. But I promise you, we started with an easy book on purpose, but we are not always going to take easy topics. We want to do books on reporting services, on NoSQL, on analysis services, on data warehousing, on performance tuning. I mean, there are a lot of data-oriented books out there, and we plan on hitting them hard. 
So um, just enjoy it while it's easy and know it's not always going to be. Um, the next thing is we want to start a Google group introduction thread. You heard Brad, Rob, and I introduce ourselves, but we'd like to learn more about you. And we'd like you to introduce yourself. Brad, did you start that thread? I did. I just posted about five minutes ago. It should be the thread at the top of the Google group. And I noticed there was uh, three or four of you that were pending invites, and I just approved those. So if you're waiting to get your invite, um, you should be approved now. So you can go ahead and that thread should be listed at the top. Just use it to write, you know, a quick couple sentences. Just give us a background of who you are. Um, you know, what things that I like to know is what kind of things do you work on for a living? Are you a, a strictly a DBA? Do you do development as well? Are you in management or, you know, those types of things. It helps gauge what, uh, you know, how we structure our content and how we can respond to some of your questions. And I think if you're able to associate your picture with your Google profile as well, when you do this introduction thread, it's really going to help us and everybody in the group to get to know names and faces and backgrounds. And so we can get a better understanding of who everybody is and where you're coming from. Um, this group, you know, so we, we do this in person, like I said, in San Diego, this group is obviously more distributed on the web. So another thing that might be good is, is where are you in the world? We'd love to know that as well, just so we can get some, some basic bearings on where everybody's coming from. And, it, and why you came to the group, like, do you want, is there a particular book you want to read? Are you excited about this book? What are you hoping to learn? The more we can learn about why you're here, the better we'll be able to tailor our content for you. Okay. And then finally, the last topic is um, just a quick introduction to our topic, which is Transact SQL. Um, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is a command language. And what you're doing in... SQL is you're actually issuing a command to the SQL Server Optimizer to go and do something for you. And that's kind of a weird thing because we think of programming languages as things that are kind of under our control entirely. But in SQL, things are not entirely under our control. We can write what we want to write, but how it gets executed is sometimes very different than how we think it got executed depending on how we wrote it. So there's a disconnect between the logical structure of the language that we write and how it physically works. And we're going to emphasize that as we read this book. And Itzik emphasizes it in the book. Um, SQL is an ANSI standard. Uh, it's a standard language that is used for, with a variety of products. I have written SQL statements against Oracle, against PL SQL, against MySQL. And believe it or not, you can even use SQL as a language to query Excel spreadsheets and uh, just weird data sources access also. So SQL, the language, is used in a lot of different places, not just in SQL Server, uh, the Microsoft product. Transact SQL isn't even Microsoft specific. Transact SQL is a joint specification with Microsoft and Sybase, and they both use it. And um, it has probably about 10 or 20% differences from the standard. It includes special keywords and um, operations that are not the same as the standard. We use Transact SQL against SQL Server to get just a little bit more power and flexibility out of the language. Um, there are SQL authors that like to focus on being ANSI compliant because they want their SQL code to be portable between one server and another, meaning if they want to rip out Oracle and replace it with SQL, they make sure that when they write commands, they write commands that will work on both platforms. Um, I do not do that. I like Transact SQL. I like the power that it gives me. And so I write queries taking advantage of SQL Server, which, which anchors me to the product but um, also, I think it gives my code a lot. A, it, it allows it to execute faster, and uh, it gives me a lot more just options on how I write things. Um, SQL is important. It is pervasive. There was a language. Hey, Brad, what was that language study that you and I saw at the San Diego Software Architect SIG? Um, oh, yeah. There, there so was a link. It was. Um... Uh, was that on Stack? It might have been either Stack Overflow's annual survey or it was the languages uh, tracking um, site, that basically a site that goes out and looks at all the 
open source projects that are out on GitHub, all the code it can find publicly and tries to aggregate to figure out what the most popular language is. Um, and SQL came in pretty high in one of them that we were seeing. It was um, second. It came in second. So, but yeah. even this, even as we look at Yahoo search results, you can see that SQL is making it up on these lists, right? So SQL is a popular language. It's used in a lot of places, and so learning it is just a very useful skill to have. And, and I think even if you have used SQL a lot, there are blind spots, and this book will uncover those blind spots. So um, you will learn more about like the merge statement, or about CTEs, or about recursion, or about functions, or about you know things about SQL that you might not necessarily use. You might only be slightly aware that they're available to you. And this book will kind of help you practice that, and I think that's important. Um, so, Ike, I just sent you a link there in chat. It was the Stack Overflow survey for 2012. If you go to that web page, the second, the first language listed is JavaScript, and the second one there is uh, SQL. Just scroll down a bit; you'll see a chart. Um, keep going. Yep, there it is. Yeah, 57 percent. All right, there we go. So, in this, so, and this, for those of you that don't know, Stack Overflow is a, a really great question and answer site that allows you to. Uh, you know, ask a question about a programming language and then receive the answer from various people. It's become very, very popular. And uh, their most popular rating here is the percentage of respondents who used the language. So they asked a bunch of people who use Stack Overflow to check boxes and say, what languages have you used over the last year? And SQL came in as, you know, just barely second behind JavaScript, which is pretty powerful. It means it permeates everybody's world. So you work with SQL along with a bunch of other technologies. So a lot of you might be thinking, well, why do I need to learn SQL if I'm a developer and I use an ORM? An ORM stands for an Object Relational Mapper, and that is a way that developers have of using data um, in a database without writing commands that are specific to that database. So um, a popular ORM is Entity Framework. Brad mentioned it earlier. Um, another one is Inhibernate. But there are like hundreds of them. In fact, the last time Rob and I talked in person, Rob, you were using a micro ORM that you really liked. Which one was that? It was I switched between Dapper, which comes from the Stack Overflow team. It's one of the micro ORMs that they open sourced. And one of the problems with ORMs is they're very developer friendly and help you develop quickly, but they have a lot of abstraction and bloat. So it's not so. Um, one of the advantages of SQL and learning SQL, which is a skill that's not going away, is that you get a very domain-specific language for interacting with your data, whereas um, you don't always get that with your ORM because they're limited. And an ORM is not meant to solve every problem. Right, right. So um, the main problem with the ORM is when the ORM screws up and does something that you don't want it to do, you need to have, to have the ability to kind of look at the SQL that it's generating and figure out what it did wrong and what you can make it do so that it will do it right. So ORMs aren't perfect. Um, they're really good and they're getting way better, but they've got a long way to go. And so um, even though a lot of you developers might not be writing strictly in SQL, you might be writing in any new framework specifically, um, knowing SQL is very, very useful for troubleshooting and for getting more specialized data out of it. And that's what I'm going to say. If you guys do any reporting, any Excel data polls, any ETL packages, like with um, pulling data using SSIS and putting it someplace else, using any tooling, the ORMs aren't available in all those places. ORMs are primarily used in like Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, um, you know, Python, Perl. They're not, no, I don't even know if they're available in Perl, but. Um, they're available in the front end programming languages, but they're not available in like just a lot of different tools that you could use. So anyway, a good working knowledge of SQL is important today, and it's going to be important five years from now. So you're not wasting your time by sitting in class and reading this book with us. Anyway, we've been about a half an hour. I think I read something is... the other day that I read something the other day that um, data related jobs are increasing at like over a million or to two million each year. And one thing that's really interesting in the NoSQL world, which stands for not only SQL, is that as these NoSQL databases start having trouble with large aggregates and stuff, they're starting to morph into a SQL-like language to query the data. So again, on that same uh, premise of this is not a wasted skill, that's just further evidence to show the value of SQL and getting it into your, you know, your um, 
your tool belt. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks. Okay. So, um, you guys, we've been a half an hour for our introduction. Remember your commitments. Your commitments are um, one, that you're going to interact on the Google group and that we're not going to make fun of each other for dumb questions, but we're going to be a safe place for everybody to learn. Um, remember that um, because we have the author coming to join us, we're just going to be friendly and write a book review when we're done reading the book. It doesn't have to be good. You can say it sucked if you thought it sucked, but um, please write a book review for the book. Um, use the Google group so we can all get to know each other. Remember that we're reading chapters one through three this month and that we'll meet back here in April. And uh, follow us on Twitter and that's about it. Um, please participate in the Google group introduction thread so we learn a little bit more about you and we can kind of get to know you a little bit and, and enjoy our new community. We're going to be dedicated to make sure our meetings happen every month and we're reliable and we hope you'll be reliable and uh, we'll just enjoy each other's company. Thanks. So I, I see a couple people that have already gone in the introductions thread. That's great. We really appreciate it. I would love to have everybody do it. Um, we talked about how to ask questions in the meeting itself by raising a hand. So maybe before we close out, if anybody has any questions that they want to ask, we've been trying to, to answer them if you've typed them in. Um, but if anybody wants to be brave and share their voice with us if they can and ask a question. If you have one, feel free to raise your hand now before we close out and we'll take that question. And I see a couple here in the chat window that we'll get to as well. Uh, do we have a date for the April meeting was a question by Karen. Uh, I think we're doing it the same, uh, what is this Wednesday? The same Wednesday of every month, right? Yep, it's always the third Wednesday of every month. Yeah, so yep. third Wednesday. So the April meeting would be the s April 17th is the third Wednesday of April. Yeah, you're going to see my personal calendar here. Sorry, guys. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, April 17th. Uh, okay, so here's a, question from, here's a question from Michael Nettles that I think is good for us to, as multiple people, to uh, answer. And he says, is there any special reason you chose the sequel book versus a different sequel book? So maybe well, that's interesting. Start there. That's a good question. Yeah, I can I can answer that question. The first thing is... We wanted to start with an easy topic, and T SQL was something that everybody knew already. And but we nobody knows it really well. I mean, people know T SQL, but they're not. It's a almost it's very difficult to know everything about it. So there were there was room for improvement for both Brad, Rob, and I. And so we thought you'd enjoy, you know, watching us struggle sometimes too. Um, we wanted an easier topic. We didn't want to jump in with something difficult that people would kind of you know, really feel overwhelmed with. And be when we chose T-SQL, there are only a couple of experts on T-SQL around, and the foremost expert on it is Itzik Ben-Gan. He's been a T-SQL expert for at least 10 years. I've been reading his books and seeing his lectures for a really long time. Um, he is very, very smart, very good teacher and communicator, and very dedicated to having people learn. So we chose Itzik's book, out of the gate. Um, he was an obvious choice for us. Also, Brad and I had read his book before, and so we picked a book that would be kind of easier for us because, uh, you know, we wanted to start off and get work the kinks out of the process, so we didn't want to be overwhelmed with the topic um, while we were like learning GoToWebinar and learning how to do this online and kind of doing a good job here. So, um, does that answer your question, Michael? Yeah, I think that's a good answer. Um, we're catching up with one of them here. So Karen's asking, if you're not able to attend each meeting, will there be a recording? So we are recording today, and we're going to try to record all of the meetings. Uh, we haven't figured out where we're going to host those yet. Uh, it may just end up being a YouTube channel or something. Uh, we're going to see how public we can make them. Uh, we would encourage you all to, to, to attend in person if you can, though, because I think the discussion is a bit more dynamic and if you're just watching back the video, it, it may not you may not get as much uh, as much benefit. Um, David Chamberlain says he likes the book, so that's good. He thinks it's a good book to start with. We know David, don't we? Do, how do I know? Um, okay, so I'm going to schedule our next webinar right here. So we're going to say um, SQL Pass SQL Book Readers. Um, second meeting. 
and then we'll do it for April. And then so I, you're going to see this get updated on the website right now. And if you guys want to, you can join up and and uh, be there with us. So look at that. Boom. We don't mess around here. You guys need something done, we just take care of it. All right, I it think is. that's probably uh, it's probably all. I don't see any more questions. Uh, if you guys do have questions, you think of something after the meeting finishes, you know, post them to the Google group. All three of us, Rob, Ike, and I are going to be monitoring that group, and we'll try to answer. And also, um, you know, like we encourage in this meeting, if you see a question that comes up in the group and you know the answer to it, uh, maybe it's a SQL question, uh, feel free to contribute the answer. We're, you know, we don't want to just be the only ones providing perspective. So, you know, we encourage all of you to answer each other's questions in the group. And there's not always just one answer, right? So so you could post an answer, I could post an answer, Rob could post an answer, we could all give different opinions. I think that'll go a long way in helping everyone. Um, and just a couple of notes that I'm interested in, I'm watching the introductions thread here and reading everyone's introduction. Since we do this in person in San Diego, we're so used to that community, I think it's pretty cool. I see we have one person from South Africa and one person from London. So very awesome to see. We appreciate you guys joining. I know the time differences can be tough sometimes. So um, thanks for joining us. And, and we hope that uh, I hope to get some of your insight and some knowledge from you guys um, and the types of projects that you're working on. They tend to be a, different than our small little community here in San Diego that we're used to. So very cool. All right. Thanks, guys. And we look forward to seeing you online and then meeting you next month. Have a great day.